Hi, this is Deborah Peters from Neuroengineering Institute. So, do affirmations really work? Are you doing affirmations and finding that you're still hitting the same wall? I'm going to unpack that for you in this video. So, stay tuned and hang in there with me till the end because I've got some really powerful life-changing tools for you that you can begin to apply immediately. So first of all, what is an affirmation? An affirmation is a positive thought that you say to yourself over and over and over. Now, my background is in neuroscience, and when I say neuroscience, people usually say to me, well, is that NLP? And my response is, yes, and more. So how does it get more than NLP? Because NLP is like the quintessential toolbox to communication, to understanding how you're wired. And so yes, I'm a master trainer in NLP and I've taught hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of practitioner, master practitioner and trainers training uh, certification programs across the world. And yet there's more to how one can take NLP beyond the science of it into the art of it. How does that relate to affirmations? Well, in NLP, we hypothesize that all change comes from repetition. So repetition of how many times? Well, somewhere between three times, seven times, and 21 repetitions, and we create a new pattern. And the whole idea behind, or the whole premise behind affirmations is when you say them over and over and over, it builds up this new patterning within you, and then you actually start exhibiting the new pattern. And yes, this has tremendous value, and I can say that from my heart because that's how I began down this path. It was the early 90s, and I read a book by Louise Hay called You Can Heal Your Life, and it's filled with exercises of how you can change your self-talk and you can start making positive affirmations. And she has you actually using it as mirror work. So I did that. I mean, I took a deep dive. I'm like, oh my God, this is incredible. I can change my life. I can get rid of all the problems. <laughs> and yeah, it worked. I mean, I had some really significant breakthroughs. And then I hit the wall. And I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, what is going on? Like these affirmations should work. So I just did more affirmations and more and more affirmations. And I just put all this effort into these affirmations. But what was really disconnecting for me, which I think it is for a lot of people, is the vibration wasn't there. So my unconscious or the universe, you know, I believe our unconscious is the universe. So um, my unconscious, was not buying it, you know? I was saying the words, but I wasn't in alignment with the vibration of the words. In fact, the more I said the affirmations, it was really a pain driver to overcome the pain of something, and it, it was like filled with angst. So the words were really more or less counterproductive. So here's what I, I learned from doing thousands of personal breakthrough sessions with individuals executives, heads of state, company leaders, like some really high profile people and some folks that live their life out of the spotlight. I'm not going to call them regular people because we're all the same, but they just we just do different things with our with our lives, our time, our career. So all kinds of people from all walks of life and a, a personal breakthrough session averaged somewhere between 27 hours and 36 hours per person. So when, when you're rewiring someone's patterning for that many hours, you can't help but look inside. You know, every client I worked with, I got great inspiration, a snapshot of my own stuff, things that I was clearing, a view of what was holding me back. I mean, it was just this incredible process. And I did that for a decade. And I also went through that process with couples. So what I learned is that this concept that our psychosis is like an onion and that when you peel back enough layers of the onion you actually get down to the root cause or the core of who you are is not true. And I think this is the basis for psychology but it's simply erroneous. But it was the best theory we had at the time and now that consciousness has raised in humanity 
now we know that you know that's really not accurate and and so when I'm scaling a company and I've been doing this for 20 years in 16 countries when I'm scaling a company the first thing I bring into the mix within my in my business accelerator system is the mindset because when when I teach the leaders of the company how to understand what drives their behavior what drives their decision making process what pushes their buttons so that their buttons don't get pushed because when your buttons get pushed and you're in reactionary mode you're not making sound decisions it actually increases choice it increases um, the opportunity to allow in more solutions and things that you haven't thought of yet that you've been blocking by doing it the old school of it just being a business that's purely transactional and debits and credits and you're not really looking at the energy of the business or the spirit of the business so yes affirmations have value and I want you to continue to do them so I do have my clients do affirmations with the understanding that affirmations really um, can be like a, a band-aid over the problem and the problem can still be percolating um, under the surface because let's imagine you have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of negative emotions rolling around in the background or limiting beliefs rolling around in the background you have a lot of bandwidth on that negativity so it's like that's like swimming up the stream against the current you have a lot of investment in that reality right the flip side of that is with the affirmations you don't have a whole lot of bandwidth they're pretty new so even if you're saying them 3, 7, 21 times a bazillion there still probably isn't as much bandwidth as the negative program that's percolating in the background so it, what ends up happening is it becomes like this it's like affirmation bumping into limiting belief affirmation bumping into negative emotion affirmation bumping into false premise of lack of worthiness whatever the or all of the above you know whatever the situation is so the biggest thing that I want you to learn and understand from this video and then I'll do some more because I, I have a lot I want to share with you is that in actuality at some level you have to make a decision and so in NLP I always used to say just decide to decide like if you can't actually make a decision now to feel good about yourself then just decide to decide to make a decision because every one of these steps actually opens the door in your mind about what you can receive you see what happens with affirmations and the reason they don't work is because there is no root cause there is no root cause so stop looking for the root cause okay save yourself a few decades of, of, of work and I'm here to share this with you because I've been doing this for 20 plus years and I'm giving you the shortcut. I believe the smallest change for the greatest result. The thing of it is, is that we are a, a nucleated sphere. So what that means is the more you come in on the layers, the more layers are self-propagated. So you're never going to get to the root cause that's why when you start looking for what's wrong you will always find more of what's wrong because as you dissolve the what's wrong it actually propagates more of what's wrong that's why the war on drugs doesn't work the war on on sex trafficking doesn't work wars on anything don't work because what it does is that there's this nucleated sphere that just creates more of the same so I'm sure you're probably thinking, well, then why don't affirmations, aren't they, why aren't they a nucleated sphere where they create more of the same? And the thing is, is that they're just, it's not enough momentum to create the shift. So here's the answer. 
The answer is learning to ask yourself questions that open up the neurotransmitters to free up the space for you to be your greatest self. I'm going to say that again. So asking questions that open up and invigorate and inspire the new neurotransmitters to be formed around your greatest self. Because when you came onto this planet, you came in a miracle. And then you bought into a whole bunch of programming over the years, you know, parents, teachers, coaches, churches, schools, television, music, movies, I mean, it, friends, it just goes on and on and on. So if you're affirming, you're doing this, you're, you're trying to, you're creating conflict. And wherever you create conflict, it just pushes up against itself and it becomes more. So what you do is you ask new questions, right? And it's the quality of the questions that you ask yourself that actually enables you to create the change you want to see in your life. So what's a great question to ask? My favorite is, how does it get better than this? How can it get better than this? And another of my favorite questions is, what else is possible? What else is possible? So even if something bad is happening, you can say, what else is possible? Because then that opens up the bandwidth within your mind because you're resourceful. You have every answer that you need inside of yourself. You just haven't asked yourself the right questions in order to get to the answer. Instead, you've been beating yourself up with what's wrong with me, why did I screw up again? So stop that. Just decide to decide to stop that and decide to decide to start asking yourself new questions. What else is possible and how can it get better than this? And there's my tip for the day for you to create new bandwidth, new neuroscience within yourself, and that will enable you to receive everything you've been asking for easily and effortlessly. Mwah.